normalmente veo muy poca la televisión. Normally I watch very little on TV. Solo esta mañana por casualidad hoy eh, publicidad por una serie de televisión. Just uh, this morning I by chance I uh, listened just the advertisement for one TV program con el nombre Perdiendo el Norte que se mueran los feos which has the name uh, Losing the North that the ugly persons die y me viene a la mente el video que vi sobre el interior de la tierra Uh, I remember the video about the inner earth uh, porque dice perdiendo el norte because it says uh, losing the north cuando el piloto estaba sobrevolando esta zona donde se abre el, uh, este agujero when the pilot was uh, flying about this place where uh, the bottomless pitch is, which is, uh, um, they mentioned in uh, the, the Bible, Revelation, Apocalypse, and um, mentioned also the agujero sin fondo in the last chapter of the Bible. Uh, el compás, um, la brújula del compás uh, se volvió loco y ya no se veía el norte por el también el magnetismo. Uh, because um, there in this place uh, the compass didn't uh, function anymore, it went crazy um, because of magnetism too. Esto es lo que quería decir al respecto perdiendo el norte. That's what I wanted to say, um, referring to, I said, uh, losing the north. Y la otra cosa, que se mueran los feos. And the other thing that they said, um, that the ugly, the ugly people should die. Um, la sociedad vril, uh, the society vril from the tiempos de Nazi Hitler, Adolf Hitler, uh, of the time of Hitler, um, han empezado un programa para modificar el ADN para crear una raza de superhumana humanos. Uh, they started a program to design the DNA to um, yeah to create a super race, a superior race. Bueno, estoy visitando ahí la página web de Antena 3, yo vine just visiting the web page of Antena 3, uh, who, um, the TV channel which uh, presents this uh, program, uh, uh, el canal de televisión que presenta esta serie. Um, the, I, I, este cartel dice, yo vine a Alemania a buscarme la vida, no a complicármela. It says, um, I came to Germany not to just to uh, make money or uh, if I translate it directly to search um, the life or my life uh, not not to make it more complicated. Estreno 6 de marzo 2015. Uh, it starts 6 of March, March 6. Um, hashtag Perdiendo el Norte, escrito juntos. Hashtag, uh, yeah. Vale, a continuación voy a pegar un pequeño trailer, teaser, del 
Sí, de este, Perdiendo el Norte 2015. Now later, of course, in Spanish, I will paste a little trailer of this. And later, after this trailer, it's about one, one minute, 50, 44 seconds. I'll paste um, a part of this video um, in the earth. Después de este trailer, voy a pegar uh, una parte del video uh, in the earth. Actually, it's Creative Commons, but it's not normally. If it's Creative Commons, it's allowed to um, remix, a reuse allowed. But uh, now I found several videos that are, in spite of being Creative Commons, it's not possible to to remix because of a copyright claim. It opens the window copyright. Bueno. Eh, este video que voy a pegar es Creative Commons, que normalmente el reuso es eh, permitido, um, a remix allowed, pero ya he hecho una varias, varias, eh, una colección de videos que a pesar de ser Creative Commons no está permitido de reusarlo porque son eh, copyright claim. Eh, alguien uh, o parece como que una corporación quiere inhibir que se copie que se que se disparse la, la verdad the truth llega usted tarde los diez minutos de cortesía no lleva mucho tiempo en Alemania verdad Yo no he venido a Alemania a hacer el trabajo que los alemanes no quieren hacer. Ajá. ¿Pero tú qué te crees que es esto de migra? Mi mao de los cojones. Por Dios. Este idioma para cojonar a media Europa está muy bien, ¿eh? Pero para comunicarse... Por... 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 ¿Cómo hablas alemán ya? Perdona, puta col fermentada, eh. Si es que no echas de menos la dieta mediterránea hasta que te falta. Hostia. Es que lo de las pastillas. El imbécil. La verde. Lo que no sabía es que tenía una hermana. Hermana. No soy Nadia, su novia. Vaya ojo tengo yo para las parejas. Tus padres saben lo bien que lo estás pasando aquí, ¿eh? Igual no podemos devolver. ¿A dónde? ¿Al mar? ¡Picha brava! Ha dicho embarazada, Braulio. ¡Carla! Que yo, para eso de comer, soy un tiquismiqui. ¿Qué ¡Ah! os quedáis en este país tan maravilloso? ¡Ole tus huevos! A mí no me mueven de aquí ni con otro holocausto. ¿Eh? No, que era broma, ¿eh? Que yo tengo muchos amigos judíos, ¿eh? aviones, los pilotos tienen prohibidos de sobrevolar los eh, polo norte y polo sur. And it's astonishing that the planes, uh, the pilots are prohibited to fly over the poles, North Pole, South Pole, Antarctica, Antarctica. One thing leads to another. And uh, I'm, when I started reading this, it's one of these things in your life, when you read it, it uh, you'll never forget it. All right? I'll never forget this. I'll never forget it because of the implications involved in it. First of all, it's the testimony of an honorable man. Admiral, he's an admiral. He's gone on now, but admiral. Uh, uh, Bird, Richard Bird. Here's the man who flew over the North Pole and was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor And I read the, the uh, statement uh, attached to that, how that he risked his life and so forth. He flew over the South Pole. That's not all he did, though. After the war, he led a exposition, or a, a, uh, uh, 
what do you call it, uh, expedition to South America with over 4,000 troops and eight, nine, 10, 12 warships. And uh, it was called Operation High Jump. Never heard of it. But when you find out about one thing, it leads to another Open thing. Your mind. Well, let's get into it quickly because you're wondering what's going on. The man's an aviator, he's a pilot. And uh, he leaves at 0600 hours. That's six o'clock in the morning for folks that, you know, if you're not familiar with the 24 hour clock, 0600 is six o'clock in the morning. He, he flies out and he's headed, uh, he headed north. He gives, his, he gives updates as to his flight, to turbulence that he gets in the air. He drops his altitude, raises his altitude, standard procedures of any pilot. And uh, he does this and he talks about how he does it and uh, continues to fly. He has, uh, he has constant radio checks with his base so they'll know where he is, they can keep up with him. And uh, back in those days, they didn't have GPS and all of that stuff, so uh, they flew by what's called dead reckoning a lot of times. And pilots know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about dead reckoning. At, uh, at, uh, he, continues to, he continues to talk to them until he gets down, until he, until he comes, he's flying over the ice, he's flying over the North Pole. And what do you expect to see? Con nothing but ice. That's what you expect to see. One sheet of ice after another sheet, just solid white ice, snow, the North Pole. Until uh, he, uh, he sees a creature down below, which it looks to him like a mammoth, and he drops his altitude to about 1,400 feet, and it is a mammoth. Open your mind. And uh, uh, this begins to really get his attention. Uh, he sees a mountain range, and in, uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, so now he's been in the air for four hours, he says he crosses over the small mountain range and still proceeding north what is best can be ascertained beyond the mountain range is what appears to be a valley with a small river or stream running through the center portion. There should be no green valley below, no green valley in, north, in, 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 Arctic, in the Arctic, no green valley. And uh, something is definitely wrong and abnormal here, he says. We should be over ice and snow. To the port side, port is left, starboard is right. To the port side are great forests growing on the mountain slopes. Open your mind. Our navigator, our navigation in instruments are still spinning. And the reason they're spinning is because he's approaching magnetic north. And if you and the magnetic pole, if you ever get around the magnetic pole, you forget your your your, your magnetic compass. It's not going to work because the magnetism is so intense, and 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 the movement is so great that you, that it's it's no use to you. But in any event, he says uh, his uh, his navigational instruments are spinning. The gyroscope is oscillating back and forth. Then he sees this beneath, and he says. At 1,400 feet, and I execute a sharp left turn to better examine the valley below. It is green with either moss or some type of tight-knit grass. The light here seems different. I cannot see the sun anymore. We make another left turn, and we spot what seems to be a large animal of some kind below. It appears to be an elephant. No, it looks more like a mammoth. This is incredible, he says, yet there it is. He decreases his altitude to 1,000 feet and, take, and he takes binoculars to better examine the animal. It is confirmed it is definitely a mammoth-like animal. Report this to base camp. Open your mind. So ten, uh, at 10.30 hours, he encountered more rolling green hills. The external temperature indicator reads 74 degrees Fahrenheit. He's in the North Pole. Continuing on our heading now, navigation instruments seem normal now. I'm puzzled over their actions. Attempt to contact base camp. Radio is not functioning. And now what follows is one of the most incredible things I've ever read in my life. And let me put it in the context of this. When Satan showed the Lord Jesus Christ the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, he did just that. He has power. And uh, there are things going on that there is absolutely no physical definition or logical reasoning to but the existence of it cannot be denied. And this is what's happening here. In 1130 hours, countryside below is more level than normal. If I may use that word ahead, we spot what seems to be a city. This is impossible. Aircraft seems light and oddly buoyant. The controls refuse to respond. My God, he says, off our port and starboard wings, a strange type of aircraft. They're closing rapidly alongside. They're disc shaped and have a radiant quality to them. They are close enough now to see the markings on them. It is a type of swastika. This is fantastic. Where are we? What has happened? I tug at the controls again. They will not respond. We're caught in an invisible vice grip of some type. A 
11.35 hours, our radio crackles and a voice comes through in, uh, in what appears to, in English with what appears to be a slight Nordic or Germanic accent. The, the message is, welcome, Admiral, to our domain. We shall land you in exactly seven minutes. Relax, Admiral. You are in good hands. I note the engines of our plane have stopped running. The aircraft is under some strange control and is now turning itself. The controls are useless. In plainer words, he's been taken over completely. Now, up to this point, you're going to say to yourself, well, this is a mad man. Or you may say to yourself, I know the power of the devil. I know how he can deceive. And what follows, he is taken into a city by blonde-haired men who look like these Aryans that Hitler and the rest of them are talking about in Germany. And then he's finally taken to their leader. And when, he take, when he's taken to their leader, uh, he has a conversation with him. He's their master. And that master tells him that essentially that they've been observing us on top of the earth where we live for a long time and that we have gotten to the point by killing each other and they're talking about the atomic bomb that had been just been recently dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You know those two. This happened 1940, uh, in 1947, I think this happened. These bombs had just recently been dropped. They were dropped uh, April, wasn't it? April the 3rd, 9th, 1945, somewhere in April. These bombs had just been dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they were saying that we are going to have to do something with the people who dwell on Earth because you have gotten it out of hand. They tell Admiral Byrd that he's an honorable man, and, they ask, and he asks him, why am I here? He, they said, because you're chosen to be here. You're a man that we can trust. We're going to tell you what's happening. We're going to tell you all of this. They tell him. They send him back. All right, he goes back, apparently, and reports this to the United States government, because remember, he is a military officer accountable to his chain of command. So he goes back and he tells his, his superiors, and uh, apparently they tell him to hush this up. This stays, this stays hushed, hushed until right before he dies, this diary comes out. Because he says, I cannot leave this world Open your mind. without letting humanity know what has happened. I cannot leave. I must tell them what happened. Now, before we go any further, let's ask ourselves some questions. Number one, did he write this diary? Is this Admiral Byrd's diary? Did he really did he really write this? Number two, if he really did write this, and this is legitimate, this is his diary, then something obviously happened to this man when he was over the North Pole. Something happened. Something obviously happened to this man. Number three, regardless of whatever happened to this man, he's convinced something happened to him, so it's it's incumbent upon us what did happen to him when he was over the North Pole. All right. If you, press, if you press this thing a little further and do a little more studying into it, you'll find out that there's an awful lot of people out there that believe the earth is hollow. That it's not, it's not, uh, it's not a, it, there's not a molten mass in it like they say. Now, if you're a Bible believer, you know this. You know that the heart of this earth, hell, is located. If you believe the Bible, all right? If you believe the Bible. And if you believe the Bible, the book of Revelation makes it very plain that the bottomless pit, which is hell, was opened and out of that pit came these creatures upon the earth. They're coming out on the earth. They're coming out on the face of the earth. Now that's a wild thing. Open your mind. This is why a lot of churches in this country, an awful lot of churches in this country, absolutely refuse to read or study the book of Revelation or preach from it because it has some things in it that just literally blow your mind. And that's one of them. Talking about creatures coming up out of the bottomless pit, a polyon and a bad and all of that. But if I'm a, and I'm a Bible believer, I believe it's real. All right. You can get off and you can get way out in left field with a hollow earth theory. All right. And you can get in deep into all of this stuff that I'm just kind of going to, I'm just going to present it to you this morning in the context of what we're studying. Because we're studying, we're studying a, 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 uh, a deceit that's coming on this earth of unbelievable proportions, a deceit, all right, a deceit. Now, we know that Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, when he was Chancellor of Germany, was deep into the occult. We know they didn't do anything unless they consulted their occult masters and prognosticators and what have you. And that German, the German high command, Himmler and men like that, 
Even Himmler himself was far more into the occult than Hitler, and Hitler was head over heels into it, but Himmler was deep into it. Open your mind. Uh, these men were guided every moment of their life by an, an occult, satanic power and spirit. Germany, Germany did definitely develop during World War II some of the highest technology on the earth. I saw this the other day on the History Channel, and I didn't know this. Nobody had ever told me this. But this is what the History Channel reported, that two German scientists in the 30s, in the 30s, these two German scientists had split the atom. Now think hard on that. Open your mind. Think hard on that. And it was the German scientists, Werner, Werner von Braun, men like that, who got America into space. That's a fact, folks. That's a fact, no question about that. The only reason they didn't put them to death at Nuremberg with the trials was because they needed them. And so they, they needed their technology, what have you. Germany uh, apparently was, was, was way ahead of the rest of the world in some of this technology. Germany had a society called the Vril Society, V-R-I-L. How many's ever heard that term? Most people haven't, but a few of you have, all right? That's, a, that's, a, that's an occult society. But the premise of the Vril Society was this. They were able to tap into satanic power and apply it to physical things. See? They were able to tap into satanic, to occult power. They called it, a, they called it whatever force they called it. We know what it is. The power is either of God or the devil. But they tapped into it. And they were able to apply it to physical things. There are photographs of flying saucers the Germans made. I've seen them, but they're not flying saucers like, like, you know, the classic example of them, but they are flying saucers. In other words, they are propelled by a propulsion, si propulsion system that was unknown by most of the world at that time. But in any event, the bottom line is that the Germans had tapped into the occult world and had begun to, to, uh, to, to build this system based on what they were getting from the occult world. And that system was, was this. They believed that in the north, in the north, they believed in the north, Open your mind. that there was an entrance into a hollow earth and that spirit beings lived there that were vastly superior to us. And that these spirit beings were our forefathers and that's what we, he, Hitler was trying to do was to try to bring the race back, the Aryan race back to its roots, back to what it should be. And this is why the root race theory is so important when you get into this stuff. You remember I told you about the root race? You remember what rate, what, which one I told you the Aryan was? Open your mind. There's seven of them. Five, exactly. Five. It's number five. It's the fifth. And this root race theory, the Theosophists taught it. Blavatsky in Russia taught it. All of this, all of this evolutionary, spiritual evolutionary that brings this super race, this super identity. These people believe that. The evolution, when you talk about biological evolution, all right, you're talking about what they teach at UT and all the major colleges in the world. They teach biological evolution. What is biological evolution? That's what Charles Darwin taught, right? All right, that's simple enough on the surface of it for people to relate to. Biological evolution. I don't believe it, but they, that's what they teach. All right. Then there is social evolution. All right? Political correctness is a product of social evolution. What social? Well, if biological evolution is true, then social evolution is where the, is where the masses and humanity and governments are able to uh, learn how to live, uh, live, in, live in peace and blah, blah, and so forth. In plain words, social evolution means that there must be a one world government for men to live. That's social evolution. See, that's not biological evolution. But the idea is that if evolution is true, they believe it is, then therefore there must, that, that justifies the idea, well, men, men must live together. Then there, is, then there is this esoteric, this spiritual, this, this stuff here we're talking about that Admiral Byrd saw 
There is that type of evolution, and this gets into the very, this gets into the mystical category of it, because this gets into that highbrow stuff about the spirit beings that are channelers and guides and are communicating with people. And the U.S. government would never tell you this, but they've had all kinds of experiments into this, and they've got labs, and they've got an underground labs, and they're doing experimentation into this stuff, and they're and 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 all of this is going on right now, and people go off on the deep end when they get into it and you got to be awful careful with it because you can get into this stuff and you can become possessed by these spirits because these are demons open your mind and these demons are smart admiral bird saw something i don't doubt that for a minute but he did not see a civilization of advanced beings that had evolved to that point what he saw was either an apparition or a physical manifestation of some spirit power that's demonic. That's what he saw. But it blows my mind to begin to realize how powerful it is. Open your mind. What I'm gonna say to you this morning, I wanna say, say it to you and I want you to take it to heart. When the deception comes, if you're not a born again believer, you'll be swept away with it the deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. When Ted Gunderson talked about, now put it together, he talked about people in the high places are Satanist. What he's talking about, they're Illuminati. He's talking about spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world and they have the help of a whole, I don't know, what, you, what do you call it? A, a mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. Now, there is a mind behind all of it. There's a mind directing it, and that mind is the devil, Lucifer. He wants worship. He wants worship. He, he, he covets worship. Open your mind. He does. And money's nothing to him. And the souls of men, and power's nothing to him. He's got power. He covets worship. That's why he said to the Lord Jesus Christ, you fall down and worship me and I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. He covets it. Now, I read something yesterday. You might find it hard to believe. And when I first read it, I thought, this gets in to high tech of high tech. How many of you have ever heard about all of the scientists that are dying? The scientists that have died. These are scientists that are working on, on classified stuff like, like uh, like electrical experiments, high-tech electricity, like microbiologists, like these are the men who are working for the government who can, who can, who can support it or from, or from colleges who have government grants working in the highest echelons. These scientists, a lot of them are dying for, for uh, unexplained reasons. They just die. They come up dead. They're working on some highly secret thing and they come up dead. And you think to yourself, well, what's that got to do with the New World Order? Well, when you find out what they're working on, it's got a lot to do with it. I'm going to take one case this morning. I'm not talking about demons, and I'm not talking about apparitions, and I'm not talking about manifestations. I'm talking about rock-hard science, okay? Microbiologists, who are these people? These are the guys who sequence DNA. All right, deoxyribonucleic acid, that DNA, which is the code structure of your body. They sequence it. What are they doing that for? They're trying to find out, and I'm gonna read it for you. This is an amazing thing. The headline says this, microbiologist with link to race-based weapon turning up dead. What's that? Let's look closely. Two American scientists worked with were Benito K, 52, Don Wiley, 57. Both microbiologists had been engaged in DNA sequencing that could provide a genetic marker based on genetic profiling. 
The research, now watch carefully, the research could play an important role in developing weaponized pathogens to hit selected groups of humans, identifying them by race. You ever thought of such a thing as that? Open your mind. Two years ago, both men were found dead in circumstances never fully explained. You remember how I told you that the elite are racist? You remember what I told you about that? So why, why, why would they be preachers? Root race theory. The seven successive upward, upward uh, uh, evolutionary uh, uh, progression. The root race theory. Adolf Hitler was one of the most racist men that walked the face of the earth. He made it plain to everybody that that blonde-haired, blue-eyed, Nordic-featured, like this killer up here in Norway, that just shot to death all those people, was the was the was the Aryan epitome of of what a, of what a human being should be, and all the rest of the scum underneath uh, aren't even fit to live. Now I told you that Margaret Sanger, when she started. When she started Planned Parenthood, and folks, if you don't believe me, go check it out for yourself, was as racist as she could be to the core. I don't know if you know this or not, but if you'll go back and if you'll go check, the, uh, the 50 million kids have been butchered in this country. 50 million. Is that right? Am I correct in that? 50 million abortions. Go find out what percentage of those babies are black. Go find out. Go find out. Go find out how many Planned Parenthood clinics are located in large cities and out in the urban sprawling areas where there's a con concentration of black people and you'll be amazed at how many of these, of these are black babies. They're controlling the population that way. Now we have microbiologists who are, can control the population through a pathogen that they can create in a lab that can target a certain a person's race. You say, well, that's insane. Not really, not really. Nobody knows to this day where AIDS came from. They don't know where AIDS came from. I, I heard it said 20 years ago, it came from the green monkey. I'm sure many of you have heard that too, but nobody ever proved where it came from. There are many people out there who believe AIDS came from a laboratory. They believe that. I can't prove that one way or the other. But I do know that it's created chaos, and I do know that the New World Order will, will bring order out of chaos. I do know that, and I do know that they have, a, they have a motive in everything that they do, and that they've already said time and again that the world's population must be reduced. Open your mind. They're going to reduce the population, and here's what they plan to have in this, in this new world. The super-rich and the herd, no middle class. Middle class will be gone. Last, if you get on Drudge right now, he, st he may still be posted on his main page, get on Drudge and you'll see where he says, black middle class eroding quickly. All right, middle class, the middle class. Europe has, sur has the serfdom and it has the king. All right, that's been the system in Europe. America created a, a, a cultural system that's unlike anything else. They had super rich, always have, always will. They had the very poor, but they had the middle class. You see, they had the middle class, the buffer between the super rich who dictated over the very poor. The poor couldn't, they kept them uneducated, they kept them ignorant, they kept them poor, so they could use them and work them. Did you believe that you're doing that today? That's exactly what all these bailouts were about. That's exactly what this new world order intends to do. It's going to create a super rich class. At one time, Bill Gates was worth $90,000 million. Open your mind. That's a pile of money. Right now, he's falling on hard times. He's down about $45 billion, I think, somewhere in there. <laughs> At one time, that was, that's, that's, an, that's an unbelievable amount of money. And how did he make that? He didn't make that over generations. When he created Microsoft, and he, and he created Microsoft because he went to work for IBM, IBM wanted somebody to make an operating system for them. IBM was a computer manufacturer, always has been. And, and you know, way back before them, when you went to a grocery store to buy food, that cash register more than likely was IBM or Royal or something like that. So they wanted an operating system for their computer, their personal computer. So Bill Gates wrote the code for it. He was a computer programmer. 
That's all he was. And then he created Microsoft. He created Windows. He created an operating system that sat on top of DOS. And now, of course, DOS is gone and it's all Windows. And he monopolized the system. Every PC that came out had Windows on it. And so Bill Gates got a royalty from it. And he monopolized it. You know, they talk about the antitrust laws up there in Washington. They didn't work for him because every PC that was made had Windows on it until Linux came out. And then Mac, of course, has got a different system altogether, but it's a different computer. He became an, he became an intensely rich man by doing that. That's what's happening now. You'd believe the rich have lost their money? Open your mind. Let me ask you this question. When this deep, deep recession started in two and a half, three years ago, okay, do you believe any of that money disappeared that was around three years ago? Do you believe, in other words, do you believe that money's still around that was around three years ago? Okay, it's still around, right? It's just not in your hands. All right, who did that? Who allowed the housing industry to, 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 to build, build, build? Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, pumping money in, giving, get, letting people buy houses that didn't even have a job, had no way they could pay a, a, a mortgage payment like that, and, 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 and house after house after house after house after house. They knew that this bubble was building, building, but it was a created prosperity. These houses weren't worth what they were piling all this money into them. The day would come when reality would set in. That's exactly what they wanted, it did. For what? To create a recession like we've been in, they're going to bring something out of that recession. These planners are going to do something with it. What's his face said to Bill Clinton, uh, to uh, Evangelist, wasn't Evangelist Clinton, it was the one that's in there now. Uh, Obama, the one who became the, the, uh, the uh, what, mayor of Chicago, he said that you can't let a crisis go, good crisis go to waste. Rom, Rom Emanuel. All right. I'm talking about the elite. I'm talking about what they're going to use to bring about exactly what they intend to do. And so these scientists come up dead. Here's one at the end. It says, there have been persistent reports. The Institute is also engaged in DNA sequencing research. One former member of the Knesset, Didi Zucker, caused a storm in the Israeli parliament when he claimed that the Institute was, to create, was trying to create an ethnic specific weapon in which Arabs could be targeted by Israeli weapons. In World War I, they had biological warfare. You remember that? The gas, all that, the trenches. But uh, now they've got to the point now with the technology and, and with, the, and with the, that they've learned enough now to where they can, they apparently can uh, create a weapon that by, by sequencing DNA, now it was about 15, 10, 15 years ago, they, they charted the whole human genome, all right? Something like that, 10 years ago, I forget exactly how long it's been, they, they charted it, the whole human genome, the genetic structure of the human being. All right, they got all laid out, okay? This means they have a database built up that they can work from, and they know, and that if they can get to the point of where they can create a weapon that will wipe out certain races or certain people, then you talk about control over people, they've got control over you, like you wouldn't believe, to force into being what they intend to force into being. Now, when you look around yourself, and I'm, what I'm talking about, you know, I've, I've talked about bird and I've talked about this other stuff. You gotta ask yourself the question. Open your mind. Well, how long is it going to be then? I mean, they've got all this technology, they've got all this stuff going. How long is it going to be before they bring this together and they do it? They're already doing it. It's already happening. It's already happening. When you look outside, how many of you have noticed these little antennas that, are, that have a square box on top of it? That's ELF. That's an ELF antenna. You know what that's for? Ostensibly, it's for this. On the surface of it, that's what it's for, and it may be used, but that's not all it's for. It emits a microwave. Hitler scientists discovered, it's amazing the stuff that's come out of Germany, isn't it? Hitler scientists discovered back in the 30s and the 40s that certain brain, certain waves, certain waves could control the behavior of people. Open your mind. Control the behavior of people. Now, the radio spectrum is huge, folks. 
mean, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, you, you tune in to an to a, to a, to a AM station and you're going from somewhere like 500 to 520 on up to, what, 16, 1700. Then you tune into an AM station, you get short wave, you got short wave radio receivers, you got, you got, you got waves, radio waves that are locked into a certain frequency like aircraft and the military and what have you. There's a huge spectrum of radio waves. They could have chosen out of that huge spectrum of radio waves, they had a huge selection of frequencies to choose for your cell phone. They could, you know, open, it's available. Because that frequency is not practical for a radio receiver, like you listen to. So they could choose these frequencies. Guess what frequency they chose? It's a frequency that is right next to what's necessary to control a human being. Isn't that amazing? Now you've already been warned time and again that these cell phones could cause damage. Overexposure to them, you know. They have uh, what's what's that? What is that thing where you can you can look at a you can look at a body and you can see a hot spot in it? It's some kind of a camera that shows thermal, infrared, something like that. They showed a woman or a man that had been listening on a cell phone, just took the phone away, then they showed a photograph of the same person 10 minutes later, red all over the side there, where this, where this radiation had been emitted from this phone, all over the head, and then 10, 15 minutes later, most of it was gone. Okay, now that's a fact, that's rock hard science, okay? It is a fact that radio waves can affect human beings. They're working now. They are, they are uh, investigating. They're, they're doing their, their work in these laboratories of just exactly how many of these things they need out there to control mass control of human beings. Open your mind. In other words, they can begin to send frequencies into your head and you wonder why. Why is it that I, I'm thirsty? Or why would I like to have an ice cream? Or what? You know, all of a sudden, you know, this desire hits you. It's because they're feeding this stuff into your brain. Now you say, well, that's crazy, preacher. You know. The only people who don't want to disclose, disclose the truth, truth are people with something to hide. A totalitarian government with a scientific bent might do things that to us would seem horrifying. The Nazis were more scientific than the present rulers of Russia and were more inclined to the atrocities that I have in mind. If they had survived, they would probably have soon taken to scientific reading. Any nation which adopts this practice will, within a generation, secure great military advantages. The system, one may surmise, will be something like this, except possibly in the governing aristocracy. All but 5% of males and 30% of females will be sterilized. Open your mind. The 30% of females will be expected to spend the years from 18 to 40 in reproduction in order to secure adequate cannon fodder. As a rule, artificial insemination will be preferred to the natural method. The unsterilized, if they desire the pleasures of love, will usually have to seek them with sterilized partners. Open your mind. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, and verse number 10, 
that is with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. The Lord Jesus Christ is truth personified. He said, I am the way, the truth. Not the truth about the truth. The truth about the truth is fine, but he is the truth. In other words, to receive him is to receive the truth. To reject him is to reject the truth. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now watch carefully. And this is one of these things in the Bible that just literally, you have to kind of look at it and think hard. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in righteousness. All right, so what does that mean? Well, that means that a great deception. The Bible says that in the last days, men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And the scripture says that they will be deceiving, they will deceive and be deceived. That's what's going on. A deception on a grand scale. I read something last night as I've been digging. I've been doing a lot of digging. One thing leads to another. Opposed to secret society, secret oath, and a secret proceedings. We decided long ago the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Face the facts, join our hands, make a stand. Uh -huh. It's time to gather plans, get the shot, take the chance. Till there is no one left, stay correct to the death. They can't ever break a freedom, we will never let them. The corrupt politics is killing the system. Cynicism is it, and it's everything that you witness. They tell you what to think, make you believe that they're the realness. They feed us full of lies, and yet we always forgive them. Huh? It's all conspiracy, and if you feed it in a witch, you're the puppet. The government's pulling strings from above you. It's time for the introduction to truth, and let's start a movement. We've all been brainwashed, they believe that we all are stupid. We believe in what we see and whatever our ears are hearing. But if you look close, listen, gather your own opinion, you'll understand all the lies, lines, and what's between them. This world is not your oyster, this world is a fucking prison. Come on! happening in our nation. The world will stand up for the fear of assassination. So they strip us of everything. We stand there and just take it. I'm scared to make a stand a false flag operation. Research Illuminati. Find out by 9-11. You see they line their pockets. Don't believe the lies they tell it. Find to seek the truth. Realize we need to do whatever it is we can to protect our lives. It's time for us to prove when the conspiracy or not. They owe some explanations to the questions that we got. What are the skull and bones? What is lying beneath? All these secretive means got you lying between your teeth. What's with the build of burg? I'm burning your effigies. I'm praying a Lucifer. How sick in this can you be? While all of the time, praying you believing in the peace just to keep up appearances within Christianity. Come on. Why we gotta stand for the new world proprieties? The evidence is clear and I 